Well, hello everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, normally when I make videos, they're designed to target the science crowd. Today, I'm going to address the English majors that watch my channel. Now, every good story has got a script, and there are certain formulas that we use to develop scripts based on generations of storytelling. One such formula is something called the hero's journey. Now, the hero's journey is personified by the Star Wars franchise, so let's go over it real quick. Now, the hero's journey is broken into three basic acts. The first is the ordinary world. Then you go from the ordinary world to the supernatural world, where you have your adventures. And then you return with new knowledge to the ordinary world. Let's go through the 12 steps of the hero's journey in the setting of the movie Star Wars, which many of us are familiar with. Now, in the first act in The Ordinary World, we meet Luke Skywalker. He is an ordinary kid, everyday guy, living on his Uncle Owen's moisture farm on Tatooine. Now, deep down, Luke knows that he's destined for greatness, and right now there's this rebellion going on, and there's adventure in the universe, but he's kind of stuck with his obligations in his regular life. Now, when he talks to his family about the great adventures, his Uncle Owen kind of puts a wet blanket on it. Then one day he meets Obi-Wan Kenobi and he's told that his father was a great Jedi and he is destined to become a great Jedi himself. But Luke refuses this call. He realizes that he has obligations back at home. But the stormtroopers are looking for C-3PO and R2-D2 and they end up barbecuing Uncle Owen and destroying the farm. Luke has nothing more to lose and he decides to answer the call that old Ben gave him. Now the adventure truly begins. He meets his new friends. He meets on Solo, he meets Chewbacca. The hidden agenda of R2-D2 is revealed. They rescue Princess Leia, having their first encounter with Darth Vader, who takes from him his mentor. Luke then reevaluates his mission with the help of his new friends. He then fully embraces his legacy as a Jedi in the Force, goes on to destroy the Death Star, and then returns to his newfound ordinary life as a rebel leader. Much as Star Wars had the script of the hero's journey, the science denial community has the script developed on Madison Avenue, written for Big Tobacco. So let's cue up the music, learn what this script involves, who paid for it, and why it was adopted by the science denial community. Now, in December of 1952, Reader's Digest published an article, the third one down, called Cancer by the Carton. This outlined the current medical studies at the time that were establishing a link between smoking and lung cancer. Now, this was at a time that the average person didn't read medical journals, so they wouldn't have known about this, but the Reader's Digest article brought it to the public's attention. Now, the response of Big Tobacco to this article obviously was frantic. They had to come up with a way that they could somehow counter this evidence. At first, they tried to do it kind of on their own. For example, here you've got physicians recommending Lucky Strike cigarettes because they're toasted, as if somehow that will make a difference. Notice that they don't say in the ad that it reduces your chance of lung cancer from smoking. However, it's implied that there's something different about Lucky Strikes, and since physicians recommend them, they must be better. And they met with some marginal success with this. However, they soon realized that in order to counter the mounting scientific association between smoking and lung cancer, but what the cigarette companies decided to do was band together to meet this threat as a unified front, and they hired a public relation firm to tell them how to do it. And this PR firm came up with a multi-phased strategy for the tobacco companies. So what they realized they had to do was they had to manufacture doubt about the scientific evidence linking lung cancer to smoking. And the way they did that was first by disputing the evidence. That created in the minds of the public that there was some sort of controversy about this. Then the next thing that they did was that they claimed that the experts that were trying to establish this link between smoking and lung cancer were somehow biased against big tobacco. 
Now this cumulated in 1954 by the tobacco companies establishing something called the Tobacco Research Institute. And what this institute did was it hired some scientists and it took out full page ads in the New York Times and other major publications. And in these ads, the tobacco companies said, look, tobacco has been blamed for all sorts of diseases in the past. On further investigation, that didn't turn out to be the case, with the implication that this cancer scare was just another dead end and somebody trying to blame big tobacco. The next thing that they did is they said that, well, nobody really knows what causes cancer. So until all of the evidence is in and we have a strict proof that tobacco is a cause of cancer, we should withhold judgment. So we're going to establish this thing called the Tobacco Research Institute. And we're going to look into the causes of cancer. Of course, when we look at the causes of cancer, we're going to look at immunology and radiation and environmental factors. We're going to look at every possible cause of lung cancer, except our product. Does this sound familiar? Now, Big Tobacco paid a lot of money to a public relations firm to come up with some sort of way to counter reality. And that reality, of course, being that cigarette smoking had a causal relationship to the development of lung cancer. And here's what they came up with. First of all, fight the science. Manufacture doubt. Claim that the experts are biased. Impanel your own experts. Come up with your own scientific findings. We all remember the famous, well, we have alternate facts speech. Publish the above. Now, you can do that by taking out ads in publications or or you can be an actor and get a YouTube channel. And finally, demand strict proof that there is a causal relationship between smoking and lung cancer, with no possibility that it could be anything else. Does this sound familiar? Now, in 1969, a tobacco executive wrote the following. Doubt is our product, since it is the best means of competing with the body of fact that exists in the minds of the general public. So they reasoned that by attempting to raise doubt, they could blunt some of these effects of these studies. Now, another thing that they did was they increased the nicotine levels in tobacco to make them more addictive. And they also added some superficial things like filters. So instead of inhaling cancer-causing tobacco smoke, you got to inhale to cancer-causing tobacco smoke and fiberglass. Well, when you have something that you know works, you adapt it to your cause. That's why Star Wars adapted the hero's journey. It's a very engaging method of storytelling. Well, the so-called tobacco strategy is a very engaging method of denying reality. And as a result, science denial adapted it. So let's have a look at some examples from the science denial community. This thing kind of struck me as interesting because it says, take off your mask, think. And if you didn't have masks, would you know that there was a pandemic? So what are they doing here? First, they're manufacturing doubt as to whether there's a pandemic. Now, as ridiculous as that may seem, there are people that actually believe COVID isn't real because of things like this. Second of all, take off your mask and think because you're an independent thinker. You can do your own research. You'll come up with a conclusion that the masks aren't necessary because you're special. You're the hero of this story. Well, when it comes to climate change, perhaps the scientists are actually all a bunch of pinkos and they want to take away our God-given freedom to own guns because they want a disarmed population so the communists can take over. Vaccines, a manufactured pandemic to encourage government control and microchipping. Thank God there are heroes out there looking out for our best interest in making YouTube videos. Oh, wait. Dr. McIntyre actually put this very succinctly in a single sentence, and that is that being in denial leads to being a denier. The tobacco companies were in denial that tobacco caused cancer. The fossil fuel companies are in denial that their products causing global warming. The anti-maskers are in denial that COVID even exists or is a serious threat. Sometimes the best way that we can influence others to our way of thinking that we can lie to them is to first lie to ourselves. We lie to ourselves because we're more convincing to others when we believe something ourselves. 
So basically, the flat earth strategy is the tobacco strategy. It was developed and continues to be used by groups that have a vested self-interest in promoting an alternative reality. Uh, it could be an economic self-interest. It could be a political or ideological or even a religious self-interest. Now, in our next episode, I want to talk about the types of people that buy in to these manufactured scripts and storylines. These scripts are developed by people that have a vested interest in promoting their alternative realities. And we'll see in our next episode why people fall for it. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Our next episode on this series will be out next Monday. I hope you'll enjoy it. Hit that bell icon so you know when it's coming up. Take care, guys. Bye, 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 the science guy.